In this video I assemble a stand to mount an infrared sensor. The sensor comes in two parts with one transmitter and a receiver and can be used to detect movement when an infrared beam is broken. Um, it's to hold this thing here, a detector dual digital photoelectric sensor. One will go from this side here and the other over there. One's a receiver, one's a transmitter. I'll be using the sensor by connecting it to a relay module which will trigger the hold feed terminal on the controller, pausing the CNC machine and parking the spindle. I took the CNC machine to Maker Central 2019 this year and I wanted to have a safety feature available in case anyone got too close. The sensor is attached to a frame which is itself dismantleable. I use dominoes to assemble it and it simply sits in front of the machine. Off the shelf laser based light curtains are expensive so this is a cheap alternative. I'm mounting the sensor and receiver to the stand. The receiver will go to the right hand side while the transmitter is to the left. I drill through holes so the wires can be hidden behind the stand. So red and black are going to go to the power and ground, the green and white on the tamper cable because I think you're meant to connect those two together. Okay, I've just soldered these together so you can see what I've done. Power uh, is splitting along to the two uh, sensors across the ground and then this green and white cable actually goes towards the relay switch. I'm not sure how the tamper works. So. The tamper circuitry can be wired to prevent exactly that, tampering with the transmitter or receiver. When the cover of either unit is taken off, a switch is released which can be used to signal or activate some other behaviour. I could possibly even wire the signal wire through the tamper switch so removing the cover acts in the same way as breaking the beam. But that's over complicating things so I'll ignore those terminals. So the tamper switch is independent to the um, to other circuit. I'm now going to show you what the tamper terminals are doing with a voltmeter. When the cover is on, the terminal produces a closed circuit, and when removed, the connection is broken. So when the cover is on, this is seen as a normally closed connection, and when that comes off, it will then go to normally open. Okay, I now need to wire up this uh, socket, and the power will go to the 24 volt power supply unit, and then the switch on the uh, sensor, infrared sensor, needs to connect to these two wires here. The terminal in the enclosure has four prongs in total, with two for the 24 volt DC power in its neutral, and a further two prongs for the wiring, which connect to the relay module and onwards to the hold feed terminal. If I decide not to use this barrier sensor, I'm going to have to have something that I plug into this um, socket which bridges the connection on the relay. Otherwise that would be interpreted in the same way as pressing the hold feed button which breaks the circuit. The wiring also makes it possible to replace the infrared sensor with a physical switch which could be held to a door if you prefer to fully enclose your machine. I've cut and resoldered the wires together and now neatening everything up. Okay, so this is how I've wired it up. You can see along the top here you've got one, two is the power, and four and five goes to the relay and it's normally closed. Although 
if I grab the voltmeter, if I grab the voltmeter and put it on continuity, normally close is actually normally open. I'm just going to turn the power on. Okay, so that's closed now that the power's on. And the way I've wired this up, one and two are down, which is channel four. What I found was that, um, even though it says to keep them on the same settings, on either one, the receiver and transmitter, for the beam channel, I get a better response time if this is set to the bottom two and on the other one one is set up and two set down which is channel two green is in common white is in normally closed and I've left the tamper as is and then on this one which is the transmitter the beam intensity is set to low because they are quite close to each other. This number indicates the voltage, uh, 9 being it's high and correct. So, the other settings include the response time which I've done quite quickly so 4 and 3 are set high which is 50 milliseconds obviously if I drop those down I don't know what's going on there that's 7 milliseconds so I guess it's rating to 7 2, 1 Let's try 100 milliseconds and then 300 milliseconds and 700 milliseconds so it's almost like something has to be disrupt the beam for that amount of time before it and the alarm time is either 1 or 3 seconds at the moment I've got it on 1 2 3 Now if I change these so that they're both in the same channel see not really do anything it takes a while before it seems to trigger so um, I'm wondering whether the dip switches are actually connected to the correct numbers on this display now. I'm now turning on the infrared mode on the camera. You should be able to see the intensity of the beam changing based on how I toggle the intensity switch between low and high. I'm now running a job and about to pull the sensor cable out which simulates the sensor wire being cut or the sensor being not present. The way I've wired that up means the controller will detect that as a whole feed. So if I pull this out it should stop. There we go. Now I press resume. While unplugged if I press resume it will remain stationary. Here I'm breaking the beam in different and more creative ways. I should remind everyone that my machine has spindle parking enabled so it doesn't stop in one go and instead raises a short distance where the bit will clear the material and the spindle has time to turn off followed by a movement to a safe Z axis location.
The final thing I did was wire up a jumper connector to the terminal for the infrared sensor, which gives me the option to not set up the sensor and still be able to use the machine. So that is the final video in the latest CNC controller build series. There are six information pack videos in total and the playlist for those will be available in the description and information card. I'm going to lift the acceleration pedal on the videos for a little while now, but if you want to see what I'm getting up to, I'd recommend following me on Instagram, where I'll be starting a new CNC machine, which I think will be the ultimate hobby and semi-professional desktop bit of kit. Thanks again for following along, and you'll catch me when I can be bothered to make some more videos. Thank <music> you.